Hey everybody, Captain Murphy here for PiratesAhoy.net. Today we're going to talk about the first iteration of buoyancy. What we're trying to accomplish is to give our vessels as, as realistic of buoyancy as possible. And throughout our testing, we've been trying to figure out what the engine is capable of. And this week I've been able to actually sit down and really put a good, uh, well-designed physical proxy model through a test. The original object we had is the St. Albans, which is this vessel over here. As good looking as it is, the problem is that the physical proxy on it doesn't really work very well for what CryEngine uses. The way that CryEngine works is it uses a physical proxy that is designed off of the model. So when you're looking at this row of vessels right here, they're in different stages of being built. This uses our a custom class that we've got designed which takes all the individual objects and puts them together into one single vessel. So this first one here is just the hull. The next one is the hull and the second decks. The third one is the hull, second decks, the mast and the front stay and etc. So you can, we can build this vessel you know, piece by piece as we need to. What you don't see is that there's actually a physical proxy being drawn on top of everything. So this is the physical proxy that you're not seeing. This is what CryEngine is using to determine uh, the density and the mass of the object and how it uh, displaces water and how it uh, has buoyancy. So I wanted to see before I really tore into this and, and designed all of our own from scratch, I wanted to see what it was capable of doing. So what I've done is I made a basic uh, rigid entity that allows us to tie all these little blocks together and to make a vessel from scratch. So this first one here is just a just a hull object with the proxy attached and according to the game it weighs 10,000 kilos. So it's displacing 10,000 kilos worth of water. Uh, I'm not quite sure, you know, what their water density is. They, they measure it in a unit. There's a unit measurement of 1,000 right now, and I'm leaving it as their bone stock 1,000 unit for the, each vessel is uh, independently settable. So I'm leaving it at 1,000. I'm trying to see uh, where it needs to be in order for a vessel to actually sit correctly in the water. So with this one here, we're looking at 10,000 kilos, and you can get a good idea that you know, it's sitting in the water, but the water is really pushing it up out. Okay, so even though you see water inside of here, according to the model, this water is not really there. This is just an occlusion draw. And the next one here, you see the same thing. We're sitting at the same level. You know, this, this object here doesn't add any mass to it. The mass of the object is set in the, the entity parameter. So we still are only sitting at 10,000 kilos. So the vessel is still only sitting, you know, that low in the water. Uh, same thing for this third one, you know, even though we've added more parts, it still hasn't gained any weight because the entity hasn't been changed. But now we get to this one here. This one here actually weighs 80,000. Now, it doesn't look like it's changed much, but what it has is it's now displacing more of that hull water area. So, you know, at 80,000 with the 1,000 density of the water, this is what we're looking at for our depth. Uh, and progressively, as we continue on, this one here is sitting at, I believe, 120,000. And this one here is sitting at 180,000. And then finally, we're looking at 220,000. So when you're looking at this, each one of these individually, as we increase the mass, it actually shows that we are getting different displacement. The other thing that I also noticed is that the heavier the vessel gets, the less likely it is to bob and bounce around, and the more, um, rigid its writing moment is as far as buoyancy. But anyway, we'll get into that in the next video uh, because for some reason YouTube keeps blowing up on me if I make videos longer than about a minute and a half. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to cover the uh, writing moment and we're going to cover rigid versus static entities in the next one. So anyway, stay tuned and we'll get you up to date. Thanks.